Uh, how about that? Yeah. Hi, David. How are you this evening? Good. I'm Tommy Dahlman. I'm uh, with European Natural Health uh, Center here in, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And welcome this evening. We're glad to have you join us. Um, this is exciting for me. I've done a lot of TV and radio, and, and I love doing public appearances because I get a live audience. But this is my first webinar, so welcome. Thank you. Uh, this is You Can Get Your Brains Back. Again, I am Tommy Dahlman, Dr. Dahlman, and uh, I got interested in this kind of through the back door. And the first thing I would like to talk to you about this evening is I'd like to kind of give you an overview of what we're going to talk about and what you're going to be hearing. Uh, a little bit about my story, how I got interested uh, to know more about TIAs. And believe me, I found out more about TIAs than I ever wanted to know. Uh, and we're going to talk about causes and symptoms of TIAs. Uh, also the medical version and then what I suspect and what I experienced myself. I think on the bio you were given that this is a personal experience. I hate to say so, but yes, it was a personal experience that went on for a number of years. Uh, I'm also going to talk about how I took control of my health, begrudgingly. But I did. And uh, now, come on. Isn't there somebody else out there that just wants that little black or that little magic pill to make it all go away? You know, when you're in pain and hurting or something, you don't want to have to do a lot for yourself. But unfortunately, our body is ours. Uh, I'm going to talk about ways of stopping the TIAs and ways of healing the damage and hopefully preventing any from the future. I love moving right along here. I, as I said, this is my first one, so I have to be aware of what I'm doing around here. Um, but first, before I make this disclaimer, disclaimer, I want you to know that uh, what I, why I'm mainly doing this today is I, my main message is to bring awareness. I believe TIAs are happening to many, and they are not being recognized as our body telling us, yelling at us, that it needs help, because that's exactly what was happening to me. TIAs are warning signs, uh, and that the, the body is not getting the nutritional building blocks that it needs to heal. Also, I want to share some of the things that, as I said, that you can prevent and heal. Ah, uh, the disclaimer. Uh, you know, we live in a supposedly politically correct time. I'm not politically correct. So please excuse me if I step on any toes. Uh, but the rules change so rapidly now, I no longer even try to keep up. I just, uh, but... I'll do my best, but if uh, someone is not pleased with it, take what you like and please leave the rest. Thank you. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is uh, my adventure. Um, <laughs> my adventure with TIAs are, well, they really didn't start in, in 84. But what did start for me was I was in a car train accident. Uh, and uh, I lost the use of my left hand, and then finally I lost the use of my left arm. My spine had been compressed at the time of the accident, and everyone was so amazed that I walked away uh, seemingly unhurt uh, that I, they did not realize that uh, uh, my spine had been compressed, so I was given no traction. Over time, I got worse, and, and no one seemed to know what was, what was actually happening to me. Um, and all I knew was I was in pain 
24-7. Uh, they tried pain pills, and which I just do not work well with pain pills. They bothered my mind, my stomach, uh, my motor skills. It was... It, it was kind of a mess. Yeah, my disposition, my behavior, everything went south in a hurry and does with me in pain pills. Muscle relaxants seem to work and help somewhat, but you can't live that way. Uh, physical therapy at that time was just not what I needed, but that's what was prescribed, and it ended up doing more damage because at the time we did not realize that my spine had been so compressed, and it was just... Doing, I was doing damage to myself just by walking, talking, moving. Uh, when the TIAs, TIAs first started, uh, I was going everywhere and asking questions of everyone that I could think of. Um, uh, through other alternative uh, uh, practitioners blah, blah, and learning to listen to my body, I was pain-free by 80, 88. Uh, and after having, uh, you know, as I said, chronic 24-7 pain for most of 84 and part of 85, the TIAs were more of an interest to me than a worry. Um, uh, I did not have the surgery that they had wanted me to have for, the, for my neck and spine, uh, but I ended up, because of, of, as I said, a lot of good friends and, and a lot of different methods and things and ways of healing pain and my body that I now teach, in fact, uh, because I have learned some ways that the body really does listen to us if we listen to it. So, as I said, I, I ended up pain-free with full range of motion. Um, you know, we're all working parts. So the TIAs were just, uh, just a little afterthought. And as I said, I, uh, I, when I would go to the doctor or say something about them, I was really tired of hearing, well, what do you expect? You're getting older. You know, I, I expected to kind of age gracefully and kind of, you know, I didn't expect to be thrown in full force. And besides, I was, they said that, uh, you know, all the symptoms and things that I was developing was because of menopause and I was getting older. So, in fact, after all the scans and every time I'd take a test, they'd tell me how healthy I am and, you know, tell me you're the healthiest person we know. Well, but I, every so often I would get a kind of a, a blurred vision or a hearing loss, have a little dizziness, or one of my limbs or something just didn't seem to want to function the way I wanted it to. It wouldn't last long. But I realize now that each of them were doing damage. And as I progressed with these, um, I had quite a bit of damage that had accumulated. Because as you can see on the slide, um, the accident was in 84. The, the TIAs, to my recollection, uh, go back to 88. Because some of my old medical exams talk about me, you know, wanting to know what the heck's going on here. Why do I uh, why do I lose vision for a short period of time? Just mine was never the same places. It didn't seem or it didn't seem like that anyway. It seemed to move around. It was an equal opportunity uh, uh, shared with all parts of my brain. So, and, uh, but they started increasing in 1997. Uh, and that was because uh, I had no idea I was allergic to anything, but m my husband and I, recently married, moved into a new home, uh, or an old home, new to us, and it had been cosmetically just beautifully redone, except, unbeknownst to us, the bathroom was just mold-ridden. And guess what? I turned out to be very allergic to mold. Also, it was a wonderful three-story house. It just had the best breeze going through. And so I always had the windows open, and it was surrounded by oak trees. 
so every spring there was kind of a yellow dust that would form all over the house. And wouldn't you know it, uh, I turned out to be allergic to oak dust, or oak pollen, and also cedar. We also had a house that in the, in the fall, uh, when we'd go up, you could just see all the cedar around it. You could just see the cedar releasing its pollen, and it would just look like smoke every so often going off. And I always thought that was fascinating in the past. But what I didn't know that I had scar tissue that had affected my brain and, um, and, and my, my uh, arteries and was causing somewhat of a blockage. And of course, when you have allergies, your arteries are, get irritated and inflamed and get even more restricted. So every fall, every spring, I would have these allergy attacks and I would have more of the TIAs. And then every, um, uh, uh, as the house, we got more and more into the home, uh, the mold was growing more and more in the house. So I was kind of under attack without knowing it. And no one could tell me why. And as I said, I had been going on that now from 88 to 97. So consequently, it wasn't that much of a big deal for me. I just thought, okay, they must be right. I'm, you know, I'm getting older. Uh, that's why I'm so tired all the time. And I got tired of hearing them saying, you know, oh, it's all in your head. So I finally agreed with them. It was all in my head. Uh, David, how are we doing here? Doing good. Doing okay. Good. Um, TIA is what? <laughs> hey, I just found that I can't get to a part of my slide. That's really interesting. Uh, hang on here a minute. I want to go over here, David. Right. Can you do it? Yep. Oh, good. Thank you. All right. That's fine. Anyway. Uh, I'm going to let my dog answer. Okay. So mine was caused from scar tissue, uh, uh, caused from the accident and pollens and things. Uh, so this is what uh, TIAs, uh, TIAs are said to be. TIAs, uh, you know, is sometimes called mini stroke. Temporary reduction of blood flow to the brain. Well, I was definitely having that. Generally, TIAs occur, occur when uh, when the platelets in the blood clump um, clump together in the arteries, and it doesn't have to be a total blockage. I've learned uh, they can just be a reduction of blood flow. Uh, symptoms usually uh, my symptoms usually lasted only a few minutes. Some of them went longer. And as I started having more and more, they went a little longer, too. But w one of the things that I have since learned, that a lot of people have, uh, have strokes after the TIAs. But when they are so slight and do not leave a lot of a lot of damage. They say TIAs in the medical literature. You will find that they they do not think that they leave uh, damage. I think they do, and I think that this is a lot of the problems with some of our dementia here, and that and things that happen over a long period of time to a lot of us as we age. I don't think this is something that's that happens seldom. Uh, I think it happens a lot to a lot of people because the more I've told my story and the more I've, I've talked to different people and asked questions and, and alerted my patients to this, they all, a lot of them get big eyed and say, my God, that's been happening to me for years. Well, yeah. And truly, when you don't know what's happening to you, it's very hard to get treatment. And particularly when it doesn't seem to leave that residue. 
They begin suddenly, but leave no residue attachment. As I said, I disagree. And uh, sometimes you have the weakness, sudden weakness, blurred, lost vision, hearing loss, dizziness, numbness, confusion, loss of words. And several times I remember just a numbness in one particular part of my body or the other. All of this occurs because it, it, you know, wherever the little blockage is, that usually dissolves itself and moves on through quickly. But wherever, whatever part of that brain that the blockage is in is where you will have, why it'll affect that part of the body. Look at the causes of this for a minute. Causes, not enough blood supply to provide the brain with the oxygen and nutrients it needs. And I also believe that that cause not enough oxygen to the brain or not enough nutrients is really one of our main problems because we don't get a lot of nutrients to our, in our foods nowadays. Uh, injury, uh, to or inflammation of the blood vessels can cause them to narrow and to spasm. I think a lot of mine were caused from spasms. Sometimes I'd even feel it in my cheek. Um, um, and injury, we don't think about things like that. Also there's one, well I'm hoping I put that slide in because I found, uh, and I had heard this from some older women particularly, that had had some neck problems when they lay back uh, uh, to have their heart hair washed when they be at the beauty shop, uh, that they notice that they, they sometimes have little TIAs from that. Um, you know, as I said, mine was a combination of, of scar tissue and allergies. Um, just not fun things to have, though, I can guarantee you. Uh, Let's see, what else do I need to be telling you about this? Because this, the causes can be so many things. One of the things that, you know, if you've got high blood pressure, things of this sort, I think I have one of those slides. Ah, this is something I included in this because I found it interesting. Um, I always like to get some some factual reports and if any of you want I've got all sorts of where this information came from and da 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 uh, it's about four slides worth um, but I don't show that as a rule or talk about it but the dental description caused uh, actually mentioned the allergic hypersensitivity uh, as long well as the platelets uh, or the plaque uh, inflammation from physical pressure uh, and also the pharmacological you know drugs and toxic agents just can do bad things for us and the neurological disorders that all of those things are defined as causes of these here's a salon stroke that I was telling you about um, I put this slide in here, well, so if anyone has ever had these, that they they can really see that there, it's not their imagination. You really did have them. Uh, oftentimes, we're told that we have. Now, now I forgot to ask David one thing before we started these. Everyone can see these slides, correct, David? Yes. It's, okay. Because uh, I, I just popped into my mind that he had told me one time that uh, there were some people that just called in to listen. And I thought, whoops, then I need to be correcting myself here. Uh, yeah, they can all see it. They can all see it. Well, good. I'm Thanks glad so. to hear it. Ah, okay. Good. Now, when I show you this list, I really want you to think symptoms instead of causes. 
because I really see these as symptoms. I see it as our body. Now I see these as our body really crying for help and trying to get us to listen. The high blood pressure or even low blood pressure. All, both of those can be a symptom. Uh, the heart disease, diabetes, uncontrolled cholesterol levels, increase in the homeostasis levels, all of that can be symptoms, but it also is a cry for our body because it needs nutrients to heal itself. It does not need things that just to mask symptoms. Our, uh, you know, we, we like a one quick fix, as I said. I'm no different. But I have found that my body does not like to be just have the symptom covered up. It doesn't do it well. And it lets me know about it. And I think everybody's body does the same thing. If we don't pay attention with one thing, it gives us another. If we don't pay attention to that, it's just like it's not having the building blocks to repair itself. So it's just building one thing on top of another. One, one organ starts to go, the digestive system isn't working properly, and you know, that's usually where so much of our problems start. How many of you really pay attention to your digestive system? Hopefully you do, and hopefully none of you are on any of the medications uh, that, uh, uh, or that would lower your acid in your body because we do need that acid. Antiacids are not good for our body and they're particularly not good for people with TIA. By the time the person with the TIA reaches medical attention, uh, the neurological examination is usually just pretty well worthless uh, because it everything's gone. There's no, nothing that shows. And believe me, I've had the CAT scans and the myelograms and the this and that for the MRIs and uh, uh, the imaging. And early on, particularly, nothing shows. Uh, if your signs do not clear up in an hour, go to the hospital and get checked out anyway because you may, you know, you may be saving yourself a stroke. And that's very important to do because most of the TIAs that I've heard about, people tell me about now, and I've experienced, they clear up very, very rapidly. So if it's lasting for a while, get yourself to the hospital, please. Get it checked out. Uh, don't go on and have that, that real stroke. Um, otherwise, if it clears up fast, know your body is giving you warning signs. And please, please listen. I'm going to talk a little bit about treatment here. You have to bear with me a minute. I'm still learning this. Aha. David, I said it's fine sitting in such a position here. I may have a TIA if I keep doing this. I've got to find one. <coughs> uh, ideally, patients with symptoms is suggesting TIA uh, should be evaluated within 60 minutes. You know, that'd be wonderful. Uh, but when you go to the, to the hospital, you do lose control. Uh, and uh, as I showed you, I wasn't diagnosed to, to, till uh, 2004. And this is what happened. I was driving 70 miles an hour on a six-lane highway with the cruise control on. And I kind of got this little this knock upside the head momentarily. But I noticed one thing that I had never noticed before, my hand opened and I released the steering wheel. 
Now, at the same time, I'm thinking, oh, my God, this is not good. I grabbed the steering wheel, and fortunately, my hands were back in operation. I also, everything went into overdrive, which it does when the adrenaline goes off like that. I took it off cruise control. I pulled to the slow lane and looked for the next exit. As soon as I got off, I called my husband, which those of you may know him. My, I'm married to Dr. Andre Kulish. He does workshops and things uh, um, for Dr. David and Harriet also. But I called him, and he was with a patient, so I left my living will on his, on his phone for him, which, you know, not the kindest thing you can do to someone, but when you're really wondering what's going to happen to you, it's amazing what goes through your mind. Um, but he immediately arranged to meet me someplace. And as it happened, I was on my way to see an old friend of ours. And even though we hadn't seen each other in 25 years, uh, she stopped me after a few minutes and said, you know, I feel like I'm watching a stroke in progress. Uh, and she immediately gave me some stuff that started me coming around. I had not realized that I had really probably had a very small stroke because my left eye was, uh, eyelid was drooping. Uh, I was slurring my speech, which I feel like I'm doing tonight, and that's because my tongue's getting stuck to the roof of my mouth. I'm going to take a sip of water. Okay. The, uh, yes, this is a free webinar tonight. And um, um, is it always free, David? No. This no. is free. This, no. They're not always free. Uh, and and, I, I, and if you're, this is the first time that you joined this, you need to know that they have some real experts, some high-powered, high-flutin, uh, wonderful information and and doctors from every path course uh, alternative uh, MDs you know it just they have a wide variety of speakers so uh, so you really have some choices when you join this webinar uh, and if you don't belong to building strength I highly recommend you join I've just been blown away. Now, I, I get to hear my husband often, but, uh, but he's a pretty special man, too. And, and if you want to know how the inside of the body works, then he can tell you. Uh, I've been a naturopathic uh, physician for quite a while, but I really started out in mental health. I just slowly began changing fields or incorporating the naturopathic along with the mental health, because I found that so many of my patients did not have the physiological basis to make the psychological changes that they were wanting. If you don't have the building blocks of nutrition in you, then, you know, you, you don't think right. You don't, you know, it affects moods. It affects everything in your life. Uh, and... Uh, one of my specialties is eating disorders, and for years and years I worked with uh, uh, with chemical abuse uh, and addictions of all kinds. And I found that my patients healed so much faster, and their recovery was phenomenal when you added the right nutrition to it. You know, there's a type of alcoholism that that uh, that the person does not assimilate the essential fatty acids. So they never feel good. They just feel good temporarily when they're drinking. The drugging because it gives them a little relief. But then, boy, they hit bottom really fast and harder. So it's the one thing that they really should not be doing. Okay, back to uh, uh, David. Is there anything else you want me to tell well, since we were just complaining about the sounds, you know, I think you're speaking loud enough. 
Uh, David tells me some of you are having trouble uh, with the sound. Is it the sound or is it my voice? Now, you have to realize I'm an old Texas girl. And uh, when we live and practice in Europe for a while, I come back sounding more English. I seem to, uh, to pick up different accents. And it, I think I'm, after hearing myself a little bit tonight, I think I'm pick, picking up Oklahoman too. I don't know what Oklahoman and Texas are going to sound like, but um, but hopefully I'll I'll try to keep uh, speak more clearly. Or would you like me to slow down? Would that help you? You tell David, and he can tell me. Okay. Maybe the sound is your voice. Okay, David's showing me something here. David, I'm going to have to get the glasses on for that smaller print. I need to put the microphone up near my mouth. I'm leaning into it. That's why. It's not something I can pick up and carry around with me, unfortunately, which I would know more how to do that. But um, how is that? Is that any better? You tell David again. He'll tell me, or you type it for me. Have to strain to hear. Okay, I don't think I can get any closer to this. David, is there a way of picking this thing up? How's that? All right, here we go. Hopefully that'll help. Uh now listen, I'm too old to get this close to this camera. Yeah. I'd prefer to be back about two feet from this thing. Uh, nutrients. Uh, oh, we were talking about going to the hospital and losing control. And you do. Uh, um, when, when Dr. Coolidge uh, realized that uh, what was happening with me, he called several of the hospitals and friends that we had. Uh, at that time, we were living in San Antonio, Texas. And uh, they all said that there was not a lot they could do for me, uh, but, and, and he knew as much to do, if not more. So, you know, and that they would have to take over if I came in. So I did not go into the hospital. But fortunately, we did know what to do after we realized what had been happening to me. And I have to tell you another thing. I had gotten so used to having these little TIAs occasionally that I had never even mentioned them to my husband. Uh, you know, why? You just, I just thought, oh, you know, it's a part of aging, like I said. One of the things that I want to bring to everyone's attention, though, uh, you know cholesterol is really, uh, I want you to have a heads up about this. Ansel Keys was, to me, the, the Bernie uh, Madoff of, of medicine. Uh, Dr. Ansel Keys um, uh, did what he called research. We don't call it research at all. And in today's time, I hope it wouldn't be called research at all. But he developed his theory on cholesterol, which was that when cholesterol, you know, cholesterol makes us sick. And if you keep cholesterol down, you do not get sick. That's the basis of it. It's a very simplified science. M my husband gives it in much more detail. And then I come along and t tell it in layman's language. But uh, lowering cholesterol from a person that is, has elevated plaque in their circulatory system is one of the worst ways of treating. Cholesterol goes up when we get sick or the arteries need protection. So Ansel Keys was wrong. But unfortunately, in so many cases, the schools are still teaching that. So, you know... He's created one of the biggest, largest Ponzi schemes, that, and others are still involved and don't even know it. Uh, 
but lowering the cholesterol when we are sick deprives us of our natural defense system. Not good, folks. Just not good at all. Uh, and, and I'll share something else with you. When you start really taking care of yourself, you will find that your cholesterol, the, the healthier you get, the lower your cholesterol will be. Also, I don't know whether you all realize it or not, but cholesterol is not a, a stationary thing. I mean, it's if, uh, if you're in a traffic accident or something, if you took your cholesterol right afterward, it could be 800 because it, it's, it's connected to our adrenaline, everything of that sort. It can shoot it up. A few hours later, it can be back to normal again. So, you know, gauging by the cholesterol is just not the best way to do it. And for God's sake, if you're going to have some of these, if you're going to have a TIA or, or you're fighting to get your cholesterol as low as possible, please rethink that. Get some of the, the, the literature that's out there now. And, and more and more people are, are really realizing that that was just, bad advice, bad research. And as I said, it didn't seem like he really, he was back in a time before we had all the checks and balances like we do now. So you could pretty well put out anything. And if you got it written up in the bright papers, it became fact. We're fighting a lot of that. It's kind of like eggs are not good for you. The eggs and cholesterol are just, you know, don't eat the yolk. Well, we have a lot of older people today that have macular degeneration because of that. They had grown up on eggs, but then when they stopped them from their diet, and all because they wanted to bring out egg beaters. If you'll really notice and think back, any time that they start beating up on a natural food that's been around for thousands and thousands of years and sustained life, if you look at it, they'll start the campaign of the beat up, and three or four weeks later, they come out with the solution for us. Can you believe it? Ah. And that's what they did with eggs. And that hurt a lot, a lot of people because, you know, an egg con uh, contains, particularly when you beat it together, mix the white and the yolk the eight essential amino acids that we need for health. Uh, how's the voice now? Is that better? It was better when she was leaning in. Oh, Why she, she go? Hello is better. The next person is better. Ah, well, good. Okay. I'm improving here. Good. Let's talk about, you know, diagnosis can be wonderful uh, if you know what to do with it when you get it. Uh, and oftentimes, people run to the doctor or to the, or, or to their, to the uh, pharmacy or to their health food store even and go in and start picking up everything on the shelf and thinking that, they're going to treat themselves. When you really, all you have to do is go to your grocery store. Now I know there's been a lot of beat ups on our food and I know that they're not what they used to be, but they're still good food. And you know what? Your body knows what to do with them and how to use them. And you know, shop the parameters of your grocery store. Go to the fruits and the vegetables and, and Stay away from the packaged stuff in the middle. Go to the good fruits and the, and the, the good meats and things. <clears throat> but don't rush off to, to buy this vitamin or whatever you hear on TV that's going to help. Go to foods first and, and see if they help. I think you might be amazingly surprised. But my suggestion, if you are having or have had any of these symptoms uh, or causes, it, it, it is time to change your diet and lifestyle. Start your healing process.
I'm having a tricky little thing here. There's a part of my slides that I have to get to, and my mouse doesn't want to go there. So we're having we're having a battle. Ah, but I'll win. Never fear. If you have a problem with constipation, now here's what we're talking about. You detoxing first, because that's the most important thing for you to do. Um, is there any way of if you letting us know, uh, those of you that are listening, uh, if you have had any of these problems or have or think you may have had, or if you do know that you've had TIA, can, can you type it in and, and let us know? Um, otherwise, then just please think of this as good prevention for you. Now, if you have a problem with constipation, go for your go get col your colon cleansed. It's a wonderful way to to start cleaning out. Uh, you know, and also find the food that works for you. Spinach often does it. All sorts of greens are very very good for detoxing, and they're very good for the uh, for the colon and the digestive system. In fact. I love to get organic beets with the tops. Now I grate the beets, I peel them and grate them, uh, and add a little salt. And I was just amazed how, del how delicious they are. I'd never had raw beets before until I uh, married a European. Uh, uh, also, I can I add a little onion sometimes to it. Makes it wonderful. And then I cook the tops. And I season them with herbs, garlic, onions, whatever I've got on hand, and I'll drink the broth. It's a wonderful, wonderful broth. And beet tops, I found out, are not only good for detoxing, they're just, they do the body good. Um, uh, they're not good to eat, but they are good for a broth. Also, I also um, get carrot uh, tops and cook those sometimes too uh, in with the beet tops or just add a bunch of greens um, in, in fact uh, David came and ate dinner with us tonight and I'd been hungry for greens but didn't have time to really fix them so I just threw them all in a pot and cooked them and made us some soup uh, as our first course any edible greens you cook don't throw the broth, broth away. Season it up and drink it. You'll be glad you did. Your body will thank you. Uh, and remember to add a little fat to it, too. I like butter in mine. But, uh, uh, or chicken fat. It's something that's, it, you know, your fat is your delivery system for your nutrients in your body. Don't be afraid of that. As long as it's, it's a natural fat that's been around for years like the animal fat fat. That's another thing. The animal fat was, uh, it got a bad name because they were trying to prove the, 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 the man-made man uh, fats and things. So when they were testing the hydrogenated and the saturated fats and stuff, they threw animal fats in with the batch. So it, it saturated fat was saturated fats to them. And that's how animal fat got a bad name. Now, in Europe and all over the world, animal fat has kept people alive for years and years. Uh, and, and still in great many places of the world. In fact, um, in Europe, a lot of the places you go into, you can find... I didn't know it at the time, but it's it's uh, lard that they flavor with onions and, and all sorts of things, apples and everything. And they use it as a spread with the wonderful bread, the whole grain bread that they have over there or had over there. They, too, are getting more Americanized, and they, too, are plumping up rapidly, too, because our processed foods, our body doesn't know what to do with. It's got chemicals and things in it and, and a loss of nutrients or it's 
it's heated in such a way that it literally changes that lock and key combination that the body is so used to and needs for utilizing. So much of the processed foods we can't even use for energy. The body just has to store it to, because it takes so much energy for the body to try to convert it where it can be of use. Uh, if you want to lose weight, just cut out processed foods. You, you, you know, uh, sometimes people come in and they think we're we're miracle workers because we take them off the processed foods and they start losing weight, and they just can't believe that you can eat all those good foods and still lose weight. So one of the things I want you to do is do not eat anything processed at all possible. And you'd be amazed after you get used to that for a while how easy it is not to eat processed and how easy it is to cook and how wonderful everything tastes. But eat all those colored veggies, raw, cooked, eat them different ways. Now, for those of you in the detox phase, uh, in the, in the, if you really have had a lot of, de uh, uh, you have a lot of these symptoms and need to start healing, then I want you to um, uh, to heat or steam your vegetables a little bit before you have them. Uh, let's help your digestive system by pre-cooking a little bit. Um, a poor digestive system does not like raw stuff very well. You know, it just can't utilize it very well. You can go more for the raw if you want later, but. Uh, there's just a lot of our vegetables that need to be steamed a little bit. Also, uh, you may be interested to know that broccoli is really so much better for you after it's steamed. And if you eat too much raw broccoli, uh, that there is a toxin that can develop in your body from that. Uh, most of these things were meant to be cooked a little bit. Um, oh, and... Please, no low-fat anything unless it's naturally low-fat. Uh, it, you know, it just wasn't meant to be. When they take out the fats, they usually add sugars and, and uh, things in that you don't need in your body. Here's something else in your detox I want you to do. Eat whole milk yogurt with live bacteria. Again, wonderful for the digestive system. I'm sure you've seen the ads on TV, but I hope you kind of look around for different kinds of yogurt too. Look for one that's, that's, uh, that really does have as low a sugar content as possible and not a lot of uh, particularly not any that have high fructose corn syrup, and some of them do. Uh, these do not take any antacids. If you have a problem with digesting or belching or bloating or anything, use a tablespoon of good apple cider vinegar and sip it during the meal. During the meal. Now, do not use this on empty stomach and stuff because you're creating more acid in the stomach. But the acid, if you are using antiacids, then you need more acid in your stomach. I know that sounds strange to you if you're not familiar with that. But if you think about it, I think you'll, it'll make sense to you. Your stomach is where you're supposed to be digesting your food. And, you know, if, if you drink a lot of water at the same time you eat or a lot of fluid, you delete your stomach acid. Uh, are you just, as we age, we lose the ability to, to create a lot of the, the acid, stomach acids. So we need a little bit of help. And uh, apple cider vinegar can be that. If you're out someplace, you can eat them, take a lemon or, or a lime or something. Kind of suck on it or get some of the, the you know, add a lot to your, your, a little bit of water and, and drink it. Because what's happening in the stomach when you do not have the acid you need, so your food is sitting there and putrefying. And that's what's causing you the, the acid reflex, the uh, 
stomach pains, those type of things. You'll be amazed what you'll clear up with just a little bit of apple cider vinegar or, uh, you know, some of the, um, uh, some of your um, food stores and things carry uh, uh, tablets that have a little hydrochloric acid in it that will help your stomach acid also. Now, if you take one of those or if the apple cider vinegar kind of burns the stomach, then go see a good naturopath or somebody because you need to start healing the stomach a little bit. That indicates that you might have, uh, you might have an ulcer. But there again, you can heal it with foods too. So do it where the body can build. By the way, as you saw on that slide, Detoxing by starvation is one of the worst things you can do. So eat and be happy with what you're eating, please. Uh, eat something that you like and uh, you know, enjoy your food. Another thing you need to do if you're healing from, from some of those uh, causes, have your teeth checked. Root canals uh, and places where your teeth were pulled often have un undetected information that needs to be cleaned out. So get to that dentist. Let him do that. Uh, ah, listen. Uh, you might want to check Building Strength webinars. And if you haven't joined, I, ha I recommend that you do because then you'd have access to all of them. Uh, the past ones too, right, David? Okay. You can get it. Because David was just telling me they had a dentist on talking about all the things that can happen in the mouth. And so many of our illnesses and diseases and stuff start in the mouth. The dentist can really tell what's going on with your health. So go see them. Let, you, let them pick your, uh, uh, let them see what's going on. And if, because infections in the mouth and under the teeth where you don't even have any idea. I had, uh, where I'd had my wisdom teeth uh, that had just been pulled out when I was a youngster. And if any of you all are close to 70 or thereabout, then you know that, you know, they just yanked them and then you went on your way. Well, come to find out when they opened uh, those spots, uh, I had lots and lots of infection in each one. So my body had been trying to fight that infection, and it just kind of wears you down after a while. No need to have that. Go get it cleaned out. Uh, and if you have a lot of plaque buildup in your arteries, uh, you may need chelating. Uh, uh, chelating is done with EDTA. It's, uh, there's a lot of different things that can be used. Uh, uh, more and more doctors are beginning to use it. MDs, naturopaths are more apt to, um, uh, oriental medicine doctors. Uh, there's, because chelating is just a way of cleaning out the, the arteries, cleaning the blood. Um, it can be done orally, but it is better and faster if you do it in, by infusion. And that's one thing that, that we did for me right away. And within a couple weeks period, it was amazing how my brains were coming back. Because I had truly lost the ability to, I couldn't, in 04, 2004, I could not have sat here and done this with you. I would have been searching for my words. I may know what I want to say, but I couldn't get it out of my mouth. Uh, I, um, I was very forgetful. I would be sitting and talking with someone and even lose train of thought. Um, I would, uh, it, short, it wasn't just short-term memory, it was long-term memory, it was mem memory period that I was having trouble with for a while. Uh, and of course, during the allergy seasons, it seemed to have gotten worse. But, uh, but my brain was really, it had developed a lot of damage over that 20-year period. And um, I seem to have had been very fortunate in that I have changed my lifestyle, even though I've always thought I had a pretty good one the last 10 or 12 years anyway. But, um, you know, you can heal. There's no such thing as uh, everything in your body can heal. 
if you give it the right building blocks to heal. The body is always, always, always going towards health because it wants to be healthy. And remember, you know, your body is the, what carries this wonderful computer around. Uh, you know, we have a fantastic computer. I just wish I'd remembered and brought the, my, my manual with me. I'm still trying to learn how to use it. Uh, if you have a lot of plaque built up in your arteries, then as I said, you do need chelating. Chelating is not that difficult. It's not that expensive. Uh, and it works wonders for your body. A couple of questions came up. Yes. You said no eggs. Uh, okay, uh, there's a question here. Said you said no eggs. What about grass? Uh, when did I say no eggs? I said that, uh, that eggs were wonderful for you. Eat eggs. Uh, we were told to eat no eggs, and that's what caused so much of our eye problems for older people. But, uh, but eat the eggs. Eggs are good for you. But eat the whites and the yolks. In fact, when they did the, the um, so-called research, and you have to realize, we've had so much of our research done by, by companies that are looking for uh, something to support their claim for their products. And that's, that's not what we call research, but, it's, it's, uh, but it comes out that way, that you know, this is what you should be doing or shouldn't be doing. Uh, eggs got the beat up because uh, they had invented egg beaters. So they wanted to trash eggs and bring egg beaters on. Uh, they did a good job of it. But if those of us that couldn't believe that eggs were bad for you, we went back and started doing some digging. And another researcher had done about the same thing two years after the egg beaters came on the market and everyone was afraid to eat eggs. Um, so what they had done in the original research is they had divided the egg and they had tested the yolk, found it to be high in cholesterol, and they uh, tested the, uh, the whites and found it not to be high in cholesterol. And since cholesterol was another one of the jokes that were pulled on us this year, this century, um, everyone said, oh, don't eat those eggs. They're bad for you. Don't eat, only eat the whites. Two years later, another researcher came along, and he thought to mix them together, just like, you know, we'd always had them before. Very few people, you know, only ate egg whites or only ate egg yolks that I know of. So he mixed the, two, the egg white and yolk together, and guess what? There's something in the white that breaks down the cholesterol in the yolks, and that's what makes our essential eight essential amino acids that are so good for us. So, you see, it was just bad research from the very get-go. Uh, and, you know, I, somebody else had asked about range-fed fed beef. I love it. It tastes so much better. And I, I just think it's better for us. Um, you know, but you have to realize, too, Almost all animals had gone in for a little fattening up or something uh, before they came to us. The, even in the olden days, the farmers and ranchers would, before they butchered, they'd usually bring them in and feed them a little bit more and get a little more fat on them so they wouldn't be quite so tough. Um, uh, I think, you know, a lot of our ranchers and farmers are trying to do the best they can in this day and time. And they're really working against so many restrictions and laws and probations. It's, it's amazing. I don't know how they're surviving. But uh, uh, buy organic when you can. Eat range fed when you can. Otherwise, eat the meat. It'll be better for you than some of the other things you're getting. Somebody else asked, do you believe in fasting one day a week? If you enjoy fasting one day a week, do it. If you feel like that helps your body. I do believe that uh, I, if you're taking supplements or something, um, I usually 
don't for one day or so. Um, but that's a personalized thing. And also, if um, uh, if you're doing it because you feel better from doing it, then do it. It's not going to hurt you. Uh, I just don't suggest fasting for long periods of time unless you really prepared for it. And it takes some good supplements along with the fast. Uh, you know, we do, we eat way too much food. Uh, we don't need nearly as much as we eat. Um, so fasting, hey, enjoy. You know, fueling the body. Let food be your medicine and your medicine be food. This, you know, scientific research has continuously <laughs> documented the safe and productive ways to improve health and disease is managed through improved nutrition. You know, when, I don't know how many of you remember when vitamins came out, the art, particularly artificial vitamins. Um, I, for one, was delighted because I felt like that my generation had, was on the verge of curing world hunger. I don't know how many of you all felt that way, uh, but, you know, I was telling everyone, hey, we have vitamins now. You know, uh, take your vitamins. They're good for you. Well, I've spent 20, 25 years of my life now saying, wait a minute, we were wrong. We weren't as, as smart as, we're not as smart as we thought we were. Felt the same way when we came out with the single isolate. I had to go back and apologize for a lot of things uh, because we, we really did it with a good heart uh, and with the vast majority in mind. But we haven't done our food source any good. Um, uh, Synthetic vitamins just tax the body more. Single isolates give our body too much of one thing that it doesn't need and not enough of the other stuff that it needs to utilize the one thing that we're putting in. Uh, and so much of the time, people, our patients that come in, the hardest thing we have is to get them off of their vitamins. Uh, and, and because when they first started, they made them feel a little better. They haven't helped them since, but they don't know that. And it's hard for us, once something's helped us, helped us, it's hard for us to see that it's really not helping anymore. I'm going to move along through here because I didn't realize time was going so fast here. Uh, you know, scurvy was cured. Let me catch you up with me here. Ah, uh, wait a minute. Uh, history's taught us. Scurvy was cured by eating limes. Remember the limeys, the British soldiers? Uh, they discovered that. They were dying on the passages, on the sailing ships. Uh, very, very caused by eating white rice because the, the rice had, had been polished and the vitamin D removed. Uh, there's so much that is, is deleted from diets today. That's why we tell you when you're eating foods, try to get the whole original good product. Uh, serious diseases are not caused by an inadequate quality of food, particularly not here in the States, but it is caused by the inadequate quality of our food. But you can find it, and it's not that expensive. And good food satisfies you. You will find that when you eat good stuff, you're not hungry. You're not as hungry. And you won't overeat yourself. Diseases can be cured and prevented by eating whole, unprocessed food. Read the labels on all foods. The shorter the list of ingredients, the better. Eat whole natural food while it's fresh. And remember, if it doesn't spoil, don't eat it. You know, when they started milling our, our, our grains and stuff differently, uh, 
all the mice, the rats, the varmints disappeared. Well, we thought that was wonderful, but we realized that they disappeared because they couldn't live off of it. There was no nutrients in it, so it wasn't feeding anything. Eat smaller white amounts of a wide variety, colors, and, and different types of non-processed food. In fact, if you eat the way we did 100 years ago, you'll be in great shape. Here's the five things that we ask people to, to avoid. Artificial sweeteners, processed white flour, hydrogenated or processed, hydro, uh, partially hydrogenated uh, fats and flours, all margarine. Uh, if you would basically know what the basis of margarine is, you wouldn't touch that stuff. MSG, monium sodium glutinate, and soy and artificial colors. Now, soy enhances, uh, but it's an uh, um, estrogen. But it's it's not the right kind of estrogen for our bodies, uh, and it doesn't do us any good. Also, you'll be reading and hearing a lot about estrogen dominance in the next few years because they've discovered that that's one of the causes for breast cancer. The importance of water. You know, water is just supports life. So, so when you're detoxing or trying to improve your health or doing prevention, it, shut down, it shuts down hunger pains. It, you know, lack of it causes fatigue. It improves bowel movements, eases back pains. It helps the kidneys and lung and and, and liver. Uh, needed for a sharp, focused mind, and it decreases the risk of cancer. Now, distilled water. It, for a while, people were saying, "Oh, only drink distilled water." Ah, distilled water is an empty vacuum. It flushes everything, the good and the bad, out of your body. You could get very weak and very dizzy and feel like you're going to pass out if you just live on distilled, just drink distilled water. Uh, you have to be taking a lot of nutrients and stuff if you do. But distilled water is very good for flushing, flushing your body out if you feel like you're getting ill. So just drink a few glasses of distilled water and it'll help flush your system. Uh, uh, Drinking, now this is some statistics that I thought you all might like to have. Uh, I'm not sure how old this is. I couldn't find my research connected to this. Uh, drinking five glasses of water daily decreases the risk of colon cancer by 45%. That's a pretty positive thing right there, wouldn't you say? Uh, plus it can uh, slash the risk of breast cancer. Yay. And, uh, and one is 50% less likely to develop bladder cancer. Sounds like a good deal to me. Let's drink that water. Um, okay. Now, good sea salt is just makes sense in your life. And, and now the stores are getting more and more of it. It's much easier to find. It's so much better for us uh, than our processed salts. Uh, the minerals found in the, these, it just brings you back to balance. Um, and... I have seen it do wonders for mental disorders. Um, and it's so much easier to give natural lithiums like this because otherwise a person that's put on lithium, they have to be checked regularly or they get out of balance. They feel like they're having strokes and all sorts of different problems from the lithium. Um, and you know, your body is like an ocean. Uh, uh, and we either get the nutrition uh, we need to maintain the ocean atmosphere or we suffer. Also, I've been, I, at one time in my life, I worked with prisoners, and I've seen what salt can do for them, good natural salts can do. People that have rage attacks and things like that, give them salt, a good sea salt needed for digestion. It really sparks the digestion, gets the digestion up and going. So for those that have uh, irritable bowel or, or uh, all the new names for belching and this and that now, it, eat salt. The more natural the salt, the more minerals contained and the more natural uh, digestive juices. So it's just good for you. Uh, foods for health. 
Let your food be your medicine and your medicine your food. Uh, this we've gone over before, so I'm not going to spend much time on it. But fuel with the real butter and the cold-pressed olive oil, coconut oil, cold-pressed, things like that. Uh, but with unprocessed food, please. Uh, in my practice, I see many people that have just accepted what is being suggested to them. Uh, I hear my doctor told me so, or worse yet, I can I heard it on TV. We seem to to become a society that we we want that quick fix, and we don't want to take responsibility for our lives. But it is your life, so you, we need to take responsibility. Every time you hear from someone, there's nothing that can be done for you. You added if if not verbally, at least in your mind, <laughs> that you know of. <laughs> there is no cure that you know of, is what you say. You're going to, and if someone tells you you are going to, and then starts, has just given you a diagnosis and told you all the bad things that are going to happen to you, just say thank you and leave and go find somebody else. But do not believe it. Just move on. Because there's somebody someplace that knows how to help you, knows what's going on with you. Uh, and also, if you hear this will help you, ask, will it heal me or will it mask the symptom? You want a healing. You don't want a mask. You are in control of your life, whether you want to be or not. Uh, you know, it's like how we think about things it really does matter how we think and feel our thoughts are energy waves and when we put them out or when we talk to our body uh, if we say loving kind things to it ask it what it needs uh, listen um, and if if anyone's interested I do do a talk about listening to your body tuning in listening uh, how to do a detox of the body so that you do a kind of mental clearing. Uh, and as I said, it's a mental detox. It's also ways to help yourself when you're in pain. Fear is only meant to be, mo to be a motivator. We're not supposed to live there, guys. Life's too short for that. Have you ever noticed, though, if you focus on what you want, you get it, and if you focus on what you don't want, you get it, uh, and oftentimes I find myself, I focus on one for a while and then the other for a while, and then I, now I have it and now I don't. Um, so not only do we need to detox the body, but we do need to learn ways to detox the mind also. The prognosis is this, and then I'll shut up and uh, turn this over to David, uh, is the prognosis is what you make of it. What I try to do myself and encourage our patients to do, laugh, dance, sing, just enjoy. And by the way, notice laughing is a form of exercise, dancing is a form of exercise, singing is a form of exercise, even cleaning your house is a form of exercise. Yeah. Don't get stuck in one routine that to be healthy you have to go and you have to work out and you have to do this. but do move. If it's dancing you like, move. Stretch, bend, different ways. If you don't, you kind of, you know, you kind of congeal in one place. And that's not comfortable. So just do stretching exercises. Just use your body. Bend down. Look under those cabinets. Get out on your hands and knees. Crawl around for a while. Keep your body fluid and in motion. And enjoy doing it and laugh at yourself. Food is fuel, so fuel up with the right stuff. And I don't ever remember myself sounding so preachy as I think I have tonight, and if I have, please excuse me. Uh, as I said, this is something that's very close to my heart because I suffered so long and, and don't want to see others doing that. Um, so thank you very much for allowing me to share.
um, yeah. God bless. And I, hopefully David will keep up the good work here, and he'll be able to if more of you join. Also, you can click on, on there's a little thing above your screen that you can click on. Uh, look to the top, and I think it's maybe the top right where you can click on a little thing up there and it'll take you to, to Dr. Foolish's and my website. I'm Dr. Dahlman and we're in Tulsa, Oklahoma, European Natural Health. Questions on the website. Okay, and David's telling me I have some questions. Is water filtered by reverse osmosis as bad as distilled to daily consume? No, it's not. No. Um, different process, different uh, reverse osmosis water. Enjoy. Uh, do you know what causes uh, uh, vertical rings on the, f on the fingernails? Do you know? Uh, I tell you what, I have to get back to you on that because I've been studying more on the fingernails and I've ordered some stuff on it. Uh, because I've discovered there's, you know, I had to know all this one time or another to pass all my exams. Uh, but I've been trying to review and got with some of my colleagues, and we've all gotten ourselves confused. So I've ordered some new information because there's always new information. Uh, and thank you for asking. That reminds me. I need to check on that. And no, I'm sorry, I don't know at this time. Yeah. You briefly, hello, you briefly mentioned alcoholism and said that, that they did not uh, assimilate EF, uh, EFAs. Now, not all alcoholics are like that. That's only a certain type. There's, there's many different types of alcoholism. And uh, if you want to know more about that, one of, a good friend of mine, Joan Matthews Larson, wrote uh, Seven Weeks to Sobriety. Uh, and she talks, Joan reads uh, research documents like most people read the comics. Um, but uh, she's a brilliant woman, has done really some good research in the field of alcoholism uh, and also depression. Uh, her other book is Depression Free Naturally. And I spoke with her recently, and apparently she's coming out with a new one. For those of you, uh, I'm not sure what it's titled. Uh, she Tell me, I just don't remember. Uh, but be looking for her. That um, uh, Joan does a lot with with um, single isolates and stuff like that. She developed some things. Uh, uh, our clinic uses more. Uh, we use whole foods uh, for our healing more. But uh, she has some wonderful information in her books. Uh, someone's saying that they're losing sound and movement uh, uh, every so often. Is it just them or others? Sorry, just you. <laughs> Don't you hate that? Uh, I used to love to exercise because it felt so good at the, in the end. Now it just feels like I have... David, how do I... Spy? Are you going down? Ah, I, I got it. Uh, now it just feels like I have the flu when I finish. Any ideas? Yes. I do. Uh, you need a good detox, son, because what you're doing is, uh, and you've probably got some a lot of inflammation going in your body. Um, so you might want to check that out. But um, also, one of the things that you can do for yourself, um, uh, do the exercise and then uh, jump in a hot bath of water. Uh, with a cup of apple cider vinegar in there. And don't stay in over 10 to 15 minutes, though, because if, if you do, you may have trouble getting out. But that pulls the toxins. When you're exercising, you're, you're moving those toxins around in your body. Uh, I would also suggest you check your colon and, and are you constipated. Um, um, and take a good laxative. But the, the apple cider vinegar in your bath, it's wonderful if you feel like you're coming down with something or if you've had a real good workout. It'll keep you from being sore. It, it just takes toxins out of the body. Uh, 
but uh, as I said, don't stay in too long. It'll pull more of, more than you want out of your body. David, how are we doing? I'm doing good. I, 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 okay. All right. I think we're, I hope I've answered all the questions here. I'm trying to figure out. Um, oh, there are more. Anyway, I think that tonight uh, you all have probably had enough of me, and I need <coughs> I need to have some water. I uh, remember my primary ro primary role as a counselor. I'm used to talking. I'm used to listening more than I'm used to talking. But thank you for being with us tonight, and please uh, support. Building strengths, sign up, be a member, and get all the other uh, There's talks. A webinar on hormones. There's a webinar tomorrow on hormones, so I highly recommend you turn in, tune in. Thank you now, and good night. <laughs>